love lives here. I know that you know this, and I know that you see it every Sunday as you're coming into the sanctuary, and for those of you online, it's right there at the top of our Facebook page, and so I know that you know this, but I want to share this with you. It hangs right out there in our lobby. <clears throat> Here at Riverside Center for Spiritual Living. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Here at, here at Riverside Center for Spiritual Living, we believe love is love. Black lives matter. No human is illegal. All genders are whole and holy. Women's rights are human rights. Science and metaphysics are real. All living things, all living beings and things are divine. And there is more than one path to God. Yes. Yeah. Just in case you're wondering what we're about. So, uh, here at Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, we are working with the theme this year of Timeless Wisdom <laughs> Evolutionary Vision. I got last year's theme in my head, I got next year's theme in my head, and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it's this year's theme, 2021. Timeless Wisdom Evolutionary Vision. That's the theme that we're working with this year, and here, so we're working with that globally, and we're also working with that here at Riverside. <clears throat> and the month's theme is a so, the soul's call, the soul's call. And today we're talking about the soul's call to freedom. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we are looking at freedom in the, this, this freedom season right now. And I want to just quickly say hello to John and Lupe Marie and Tony and Patricia and Tori Samuel. Great to see all of you with us here this morning as well. So, <clears throat> we are working with this idea of freedom in this freedom season, and the soul's call to freedom. So, Ernest Holmes, in the What We Believe statements, or in our Declaration of Principles, Ernest Holmes, one of the declarations that he made in that is, we believe that the goal of life, the ultimate goal of life, is the complete emancipation from all discord of every kind, and that everyone is sure to achieve this goal. That the goal of life is a complete emancipation, a complete freedom from every discord of every kind. And that each person, everyone, is sure to achieve this goal. At the very beginning of the Science of Mind text, on page 25, the very first um, page of the first chapter there. Oh, Casey's watching us. Aloha kakahiaka, but she's actually in uh, Parker, Colorado right now. So there you go. Um, but on the first page of the Science of Mind, it says the divine plan is one of freedom. The divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God ordained, but freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. And all instinctively feel this. The truth is, excuse me, the truth points to our freedom under the law. We're talking spiritual law, right? And that this law, this inherent, the, sorry, thus, the inherent nature of humanity is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. Let me say that again because I kind of got, like, I couldn't read my writing that I was like, wait a minute, okay, here, let's try that again. Even with the glasses, it's not working. <laughs> <clears throat> the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. All instinctively feel this, the truth points to freedom under law, thus the inherent nature of humanity is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. It's forever expressing to seek itself in terms of freedom. We know this. 
It is inherent within everyone. We all feel it. It's, he said we all feel it. It is what brought Europeans to the North American continent, trying to express freedom. It is what continues to fuel us in present day of expressing freedom, of choosing to express freedom, of wanting to express and experience even greater freedoms through the Civil Rights Movement, through the Black Lives Matter marches last year, through the gay rights movement, through the women's movement, through the indigenous movements. It is this within us, the ultimate goal within us, the freedom within us, the soul's call within us, wanting to express greater and greater freedom that keeps us moving forward. It keeps us moving forward, what we were talking about last week, moving love forward. Evolution is moving love forward. It is that freedom. It is that call upon our soul. It is that divine birthright that we've each been born with that is calling us to experience itself in greater, more fuller, more diverse, more unique ways. When we come together, we recognize that there is a multiplicity in the unity. That we are all one, but we show up in such diverse and beautiful expressions of this one life. I show up as a gay man from Hawaii. You show up how you show up. We each show up as the beauty, the divine expression that we are. Ernest also said, we exist in limitless opportunities. We exist in limitless opportunities, which are forever seeking expression through us. We exist in limitless opportunities. That's always rushing to express through each and every one of us. Well, how boring would it be if we all looked the same? How boring would it be if we all lived the same way? If we all express, if we all love the same, if we all look the same, how boring would that be? How unlike God would that be? Because there is such beauty and richness that is forever available, forever expressing itself. Forever expressing. Where we get caught in the freedom is that <clears throat> we are so free. We are so free. Freedom is our birthright. We begin to in freedom, but freedom, we are so darn free. Well, we can't mind first. But we are so darn free <laughs> that we use that freedom to trap ourselves. We use that freedom to have limited thinking. We use that freedom to choose not to choose to believe that we are separate from the one. We use that freedom to forget who we are. Because if we were not ultimately free, if we were not completely free, We would be living the bland, Stepford wife of the life. Ernest calls it, we would be automatons. That in no season, exactly, right? Bland, white, right? Right? That there's, there's nothing to it. And that's not the way we are. We are so we are so free. Spirit loved so much. Spirit gave so much. Spirit imbued us with absolutely everything, including freedom. That freedom is our very nature. That we are so free that we have to discover the freedom for ourselves. We have to discover it for ourselves. Because if we knew it, if we didn't have to discover it for with from within ourselves, if it was just a given, and we, we just knew it, and we weren't left 
We didn't have the freedom to discover. We didn't have the freedom to explore. We didn't have the freedom to wake up in consciousness, the freedom to wake up every morning and go, hmm, what am I going to do today? If we did not have the freedom, we did not have the free will, the free self-expression, the free self-awareness, we wouldn't be that much different than a rock. <laughs> but that's not who we've come to be. We're free. If we remember that we're free, if we wake up to being free, if we remind ourselves and become aware within ourselves, as Ed so beautifully spoke this morning in the invocation, that it comes from within, that it is an awakening from within. Ernest Holmes called this, calls this when there is the inner light awakening dawning from within, the bondage from without, the bondage of the outer life falls away. When we wake up, to who we are, when we remember who we truly are. So, back in 1994, <clears throat> I was living in Japan. Yes, honey, I was living in Japan. Because um, every time we, there's something, some popular culture in the 90s, in the late, early 90s, and I'm like, oh, I don't know that song, or I don't know Saved by the Bell, or I don't know those pop cultural references, and he's like, how do you not know that? I lived in Japan, so it's become a thing. Um, I was in Japan for six years, so I, you know, we didn't have Saved by the Bell there. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was living in Japan, <clears throat> and it was spring of 1994, and I got a phone call. I got a phone call, and I answered the phone, hi, Mr. which is how you answer the phone in Japanese. Um, and it was my father on the other end of the line. Now, I want to be clear that it was my father, not my dad, who you've met. Okay? You know my dad. You've met my mom and dad. Most of you have met my mom and dad. You know him. But I'm talking about my father. Right? The person whose DNA runs through my blood, who helped shape me into the shape I am, right? gave me the look, gave me the chin that I have. Thanks, Dad. Uh, yeah. So I got a phone call from my father, and he asked me this question. He was like, you know, trying to make small talk at first and everything. It was like, it was very random because I hadn't heard from him in like a really long time. My mom on the other hand, every other day. My dad, my, or my father, you know, like once a year, maybe twice a year, what have you. So it was very surprising to receive this phone call. And he asked the question, he finally got around to why he called. He goes, I have to ask you, yes. are you living a homosexual lifestyle? <laughs> and I said, Dad, are you asking me if I'm gay? Then yes. <clears throat> and he's like, oh, OK. Because my church is wanting to ordain homosexuals, and I don't know how I feel about that, especially given that my son is a homosexual, and I don't know where I'm feeling about that, how I'm feeling about that. And I said, well, Dad, so the time was Dad, <laughs> well, Dad, I guess you get to figure it out. And he took the position where he came down on it was, love the sinner, hate the sin. So that was the first time that the church and the teachings of the church were weaponized against me personally, and weaponized by somebody I loved. And it was shortly after that that he chose to leave the church that was planning to ordain gay people and went to a more conservative church. And he just took the position of love the sinner, hate the sin. And I'm like, you know, that's not really unconditional love. <laughs> just saying, I don't think that's unconditional love. The love, that, the love of God that you're professing, the love of Jesus the Christ that you're professing, I don't see that unconditional love here. And so at that point, I made a decision to take the last name of the man who I did know, 
left me unconditional. And that was my dad. We used to we used to see him sitting over here sometimes, right? So I took his last name. I took Masagatani. I took his last name, and it was uh, just a few months later. I, it was June June 9th, nineteen ninety four, that I took his last name. And he was running around the office, office, and he was showing everybody, look what my son did, look what my son did, look what my son did. It's great. So over the years, since 1994, until 2011, actually it wasn't quite that, so whatever it is not. But over the years, I had an on and again, off again relationship with my father. I'd be like, okay. We're going to reach out. We're going to try again. All right, we'll go visit. We'll say hi. All right, we're doing well. And then something would happen. Some belief would come up. And then all of a sudden, be like, ooh, I just got stepped on again. I just got burned again. So I just kept this up, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Constantly seeking his approval. Constantly seeking his love. Because at the time, that's all I needed to do. And then I walked through the doors, Centers for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas, in 2008. And then in 2009, started taking classes. And then I was learning, wait a minute, these people speak my language. <laughs> These people know that love is love. I'm welcome here. Nobody's telling me that I was born of original sin. What I'm hearing is the real truth that I'm born of original love. Yeah. So there's only one love. There's only one life and power and presence. One love. And that's what I am. That's who I am. That is the truth of my being. Because if in the beginning was God, and the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all that God created was good. And that which God did not create was never, ever created. Well, what does that make me? The divine made manifest. Love made manifest. The power and the presence made manifest. If in Genesis, as it says, that God made everything and called it good and very good, then how in the heck am I wrong for being who I am. And for those people who would always say, well, it's a choice. No, vanilla or chocolate is a choice. <laughs> when I hear that, you know, it's like your lifestyle. Right? Lifestyle is like, I go to the gym five days a week, right? That's obviously not. But I go to the gym five days a week. That's a lifestyle. Right? A diet is a lifestyle. Who I love is not a lifestyle. Who I am is not a lifestyle. Who I am is life expressing. Right. So when I hear that, and I, I hear it, and I, you know, I'm like, somebody goes, well, when did you choose, or when did you choose to be gay? I ask the question, when did you choose to be straight? Or when they ask my transgender beloveds in my life, when did you know you were a man? Or when did you choose to be a man? Or when did you choose to be a woman? I ask them the same question. Well, when did you choose to be a man? Well, yeah. And so were they. It's not a choice. It's who people are. It's who we are. There's a reason for the rainbow. For all of the glorious expressions of the divine. So that the divine, so that each one of us showing up as the divine may know each other, may recognize in each other the beauty that each one is, the diversity that each one is, the richness that each one is. And so I can see and I can experience the divine in greater, more beautiful, more amazing, more expansive ways than my own limited experience of it. Wow. 
We don't ask, when did you choose to be white or black or brown? We don't ask, when did you choose to be born in the United States or in Mexico or in Honduras? We don't ask those questions, when did you choose? No. We are. We are the beloved. So I came into this philosophy, I came into this teaching, and I was welcomed with open arms. And I was shown what unconditional love looks like. And more than showing what unconditional love looks like, I understood, I could feel what unconditional love feels like. Because it came down to scripture. I was sitting in meditation one morning. And unbidden, because like I didn't study Bible when I was a kid. Unbidden, I heard, you are the beloved in whom I am well pleased. You are the beloved. And then it followed, call no man upon your earth, on the earth your father, for you have one father. And I was like, who is this Christian stuff? <laughs> but I realized in that moment. I was having a conversation with the divine, the conversation with that divine wisdom, that inner love that is within me. I was having a conversation with the spirit within that is me, that as that is and as me. That is the one. And in that moment, I was free. In that moment, I was free of projecting onto and wishing for a relationship that I did not have. Wishing for something that may never be. Wishing for my father's approval. I don't need my father's approval when I have my father's approval. And it's masculine terms, yes, but it's the same idea. When I know that I am the beloved, when I know that the divine loves me because the divine is only love, it's only capable of love, then I already have that within me. And when I woke up to that, when I realized that, the truth shall set me free. When I woke up to the truth of that, of who I truly am, my relationship with the man, with my father, changed. Because I knew who I am. I still know who I am. Other people may have forgotten who they are, but I know who I am. And more importantly, I know who you are. I know who they are. And so fast forward, look at me now. Standing here in front of you. Talking about freedom and love and a rainbow t-shirt and a pastor's collar wearing a shirt that says free pastor hugs. Never would have thought it. That is a soul's call to freedom. That is a soul's call to expression, to live, as Ed said, my most authentic self. Because I know myself as a gay man, but more importantly, that's one aspect of me. I know myself as a spiritual being. I know myself as the power and the presence of the divine. I know myself as the power and the presence of love. That's what I know. That's why I know each one of you to be here. That's why I know my father was and continues to speak. So we have a healing before he passed. We have a healing. And you know what? He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to say the sorry. He didn't have to do one thing. Because I 
was free. I set myself free. In knowing the truth, I set myself free. And so as we encounter beloveds, or we encounter society, in all of its amazing, wonderful, and crazy-making ways, we have the opportunity to remember, to set ourselves free, to be the Lord, to remember that who we are is the beloved in whom I am well pleased. That is who we are. And that truth, that knowing, is guaranteed to set us free. So my beloved this week, I remind you, you are the beloved. You are the beloved. Know this truth and set yourself free. It's the soul's call. And so Consciousness. I invite our practitioners to please stand and surround the sanctuary. I invite our um, our core council as well to please stand and surround the sanctuary. Keeping in mind, all of you, that um, these beloveds are in service to this community, and yes, Reverend Victoria, you too, ministers too. Um, these beloveds are in service to this beloved community every. Day, they are lifting this community in love, lifting this community in prayer. And so we come together now in consciousness. So I invite you to close your eyes with me and let's turn within to the still small place, the place of the divine that lives, resides, and moves and has its being right within each one, recognizing there is just this one love. This one love forever expressing, forever giving of itself to itself, through itself, as itself, forever expressing in a multitude of ways, but always remaining one, always remaining the unity. It was so in the beginning, and it continues to be so, it always is so. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And God created all that was created, and that which God did not create was never, ever created. So I recognize and know that all of life, all of creation, is the manifest body of the one life, is the manifest body of love, is the manifest body of freedom, is the manifest body of joy, is the manifest body of peace, is the manifest body of wholeness and abundance and harmony. For this is the true nature, and I recognize that each one is one with the one. I recognize that I am that I am. That right where I am is holy ground. Right where I am, the power and the presence of love makes itself known through me, as me. It moves forward through each and every one. It is expressing wholly, completely, totally as all of life, as all of creation. Therefore, I recognize that we are all one. Each person within the sound of my voice, each person watching this later online, and all life everywhere, is a divine manifestation, impartation, emanation of this one life, of this one love. It is original love, making itself known always and in all ways. And so I speak my word for this beloved community, Riverside Center for Spiritual Living, where we understand and we know that love lives here. We understand and we know that right where we are, the presence of love is. And it is a call upon our soul to move that love forward. It is a call upon our soul to move that forward in freedom. Because we recognize that freedom is liberty. But it doesn't mean we have license to do anything we want. We recognize that the liberty is the freedom under the law of cause and effect. 
so that we are free to express, we are free to love, we are free to experience. We are free to recognize our oneness and our wholeness, and it is when we forget, it is only when we forget that, that we experience anything unlike it. And so what I call upon right now is I call upon each one to remember in the divine mind, in the individualized expression of the divine mind, I call upon each one to remember who they are, that they are the beloved, and that I am is the They don't need to earn God's love, they are God's love. They don't need to earn God's approval, for they already are the divine. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for the realization. I give thanks for life, for love, moving forward, for expressing in all of its various forms and varieties. And it is beautiful to be whole. It is beautiful to experience. And I give thanks, high thanks for all of it each one. And as I do, I fly. I fly in the freedom. I soar among the clouds. I soar among the stars. I fly free. And I know this is true for each one of us. In great thanksgiving, we fly this day. We fly. And so I release this word now. Assured of our ascent, assured of the wind lifting our wings, and so it is. Love.